You said, um, uh, yeah, painter, and it, it has the titles on the back of the monitor. Yeah, introduced. Sequence is a collection of scenes that writing method. Um, basically, a sequence it covers one particular question or theme. Or not really. No, no. You can. I mean, the, the, the strict definition of sequence. What we're talking about as far as script writing is not the same as a sequence of shots. You might say a sequence with a small s and say, right, we're going to have a sequence of you making a cup of tea. Now, the technical term of that would be a montage, or you might call it a sequence of shots. If we're talking a sequence, as in a strict definition, when we we're talking about screenwriting, a sequence is a collection of scenes that deals with one particular aspect. Now, I'm trying to think how to define it. What do you think? Do you have any? Examples? A motive could be a motive or action. Oh, well, I'll tell you an easy example, the one I used last week. I'll use really obvious examples that I hope everyone can get. I won't dig into my obscure film past. Um, a sequence. The very opening of the first Indiana Jones movie. Has everyone seen it? Yeah. Everyone yeah. seen it? It goes all the way up to... You've not. It's okay. Basically, Indiana Jones goes through the jungle, um, finds the... Uh, finds the treasure thing he's looking for, voice view traps, pulls the gold thing off, 
it sets off a giant ball that rolls down and chases him. He's running along, then some other people come up and shoot him and all that, and he has to run away and escape on the plane. When he gets on the plane and flies off, the title's run. That's a sequence. The whole thing lasts, I think it's 11, maybe 12 minutes. That's one sequence. And what Spielberg has done in that sequence is he's told us everything we need to know about Indiana Jones. We don't need to know anything else. He's barely said a word, but he's done everything in that one sequence. We know who Indiana Jones is, we know what he does, blah, blah, blah. So sequence is one aspect. Uh, I'm trying to think of other ones. Uh, come on. The opening of Star Wars. The first sequence would end when... You've not seen that? No, I have. Yeah. The first sequence would always say would end there. when the droids are on Tatooine safely. You know, well, not safely. The first sequence is the starships fighting each other, then the stormtroopers board, and then all that. Princess Leia gets captured and the droids escape. That's a sequence. You'll if you actually, if you've got a little piece of graph paper, which people do this, um, I'm one of them, uh, if you're writing your film out and you want it to be the right lengths and size and that, get your squared paper out. And if you look at film sequences and you say Indiana Jones sequence, roughly 11, 12 minutes. First sequence on Star Wars, exactly the same, 11, 12 minutes. It's because they stick to that rigid rule. <laughs> roughly that, how long each sequence is. Um, if you're watching films during the week, have a look at it, see if it does that. See if you can set each sequence. It's like an act in a play. Each one goes through. Now, if I can just find this on here, on Explorer. If, by the way, if anyone's any questions, just interrupt me and mm. just please. I scream. think that, um, no, I'm not pretty really sure though, it's the years since I've actually been taught all of this, but um, it's like the easiest way to see where a sequence ends is when you have a big time um, difference in time. Like, I, I said, like, it can be, yeah, you can be gathered to you don't know when the next part will cut yeah. in a whole new shape. Basically. Not really, not really. Well, sometimes, but it is yeah, a meme. Meanwhile, in yeah. that place, that's a really yeah. easy opening. Yeah, but like, scenes. have you seen How I Meet Your Mothers? They skip through time <coughs> like crazy. Yeah, but uh, then again, it's a non structure from film and TV yeah. series, isn't yeah. it? It's oh, the same scripting. sequence approach. This is, I mean, there's a difference here what we're talking about. In, in what they first used to teach us and what they actually taught me when I was doing it as an undergrad was the three-act structure, which is awful. <laughs> they would have your beginning, which was 20 minutes, your middle, which would be about an hour, waste of time that is, and your end, which is another 20 minutes, roughly. And that's like you've got your beginning, your end, and then you've got this whole chunk in the middle that's undefined. You just say, right, anything else just should be in the middle. I've never liked that system. And <laughs> when I was doing the master's course, they actually tried to teach us that for the first week. And afterwards, I sat and I went afterwards and started the bane of my tutor's life by asking about the eight sequence structure, which is what I've always used. Um, and next week he taught that. <laughs> what do you know? But anyway, um, the sequence approach by Joseph Guliano, Paul Joseph Galino, sorry. That is probably available in the library. I'm almost certain it is. It's a few years since I did the master's, so it's, I'm fairly sure it's there. Well, full story. Yes, Rose. Eight sequences. You can keep it if you want. Not keep it, which <laughs> Typical to our film tells us comprises eight sequences. Two in the first act, fourth in the second, and two in the third. Each sequence is a short film which mirrors the structures of a complete film. But while a complete film of conflicts and issues that result at the end, sequences of conflicts and issues that are only partly resolved, because they're only partly resolved, they engage the attention of the reader and viewer. Again, with the Indiana Jones thing. If at the end of the first one, he's got the trophy. Does he have the trophy at the end? I can't remember. Yeah. Yeah. The question is, the next sequence is, who does he take it to? Now, that question gets answered in the very, next, the very start of the next se sequence. He gives it over to the museum, but they tell him something else. So that's the start of the next sequence. Um, Spielberg's films are really big at that. They just straight off. At the end of one sequence, it's an, it, the question is raised. And at the very beginning of the next sequence, he answers that one and pauses another one. It's very plodding. Um, all right, so that's your sequences. Now, if we're doing short films, that's where we're going to get into questions about how many, what sort of sequences you want to have. Um, if you 
you're going to do something like three minutes long, you're going to have one sequence. You know, um, I'll use my one, the lift one that we did, easy money. That's just one sequence. You know, there's no bones about it. Um, if we're making a 20 minute film, we may get three in. And we're going back to the beginning, middle and end. You know, beginning, that's your setup, your middle, which is generally called your irresolution, which is where you take your beginning, you set up your characters and their safe situation. Your irresolution is where you take them out of that safe position. Where you go by the typical yeah. Hollywood model. Though. Yeah, something goes wrong. Introduction, really boring, we get mm. really, really action going, like really action scene, and then you get to know everybody, then you get the golden point of no return where you can't really stop, where you go from knowing everybody, action comes up again, and then you can't stop, you have full of action for like 10 minutes, and then you just go down again, everybody's happy, happy ending, then it's done. Yeah, um, for that kind of thing, I don't want to buy a screenplay then. Yeah, I mean, when, what, the, what you'll find is you've got your first act is your introduction and sets up your position. Your second bit will be you destabilize it, you break it, um, uh, and you get set them the positions, you set your characters off and the chance to try and solve it. Your third one, they solve it. Okay, solve. That's your three act structure. It's very simple, very easy, very straightforward. That's how you go about that is entirely up to you. Now, if you want to get really smart, you can start doing flashbacks and you can start putting your end of the beginning. I mean, film noir is beautiful at that. That day we were obsessed with it by putting your ending problem at the very beginning. Oh, we have um, yeah. the movie Snatch. It's a really fun one to watch if you like going back and forth. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to think of this in the end, like you have the beginning and beginning end, and then in the end they just meet up. Mm. And, uh, yeah, there was a big thing for that in the 90s for going back to doing, you know, broken up structures. Um, double indemnity? Double yeah. indemnity, yeah. yeah. Well, Fantastic. The first, it's scene really it's the, yeah. the first, oh, the Sunset Boulevard is just probably the greatest in that, where the opening scene is uh, a man in a pool, dead. A Hollywood mansion, uh, yeah. and he says, uh, and the voiceover is the man in the pool dead. Yeah, that's and he the American dad. That's the yeah, American dad do a parody on it. Yeah, it's yeah. a really big one nowadays. Like I think in new movies, if you want to say, "Oh, look at me, dead." dead. Yeah, it yeah. wouldn't yeah. supposed to happen like that. Oh, which there's was another one called Pain and Gain has the same thing. It's American Beauty. American Beauty. Mm -hmm. American Beauty. Yeah. 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 I mean, what that does is, I mean, it can threatens to become a cliche, but what it does is, it sets you off with feeling of, well, foreboding. There's a brilliant one called Dead on Arrival, another film that was made in, I think it was 49, 48, eight. And what happens is a man staggers into a police officer and says, I want to report a murder. And he says, who's been murdered? And he said, me. Bom, 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 bom. <laughs> you know, it's awesome. And what's happened, he's been poisoned. And the whole film is him oh. telling the policeman who's, who's killed him. And the policeman figures out who's done it, and the end is they go and get him, or they try it. It's bloody brilliant, it's really fun. I mean, it's such a great idea, you know, I've been murdered, proper classic detective stuff, it's great stuff. Um, well, it's actually, um, basically, Hollywood producers and stuff like that's getting lazy. They don't really want to make a big introduction action scene or something typical Hollywood movie. They just pick up part of the end that's actually really crazy and really full of action, just put it forward, and then, okay, what happened? CSI moment, introduction, oh, yeah. what mm -hmm. happened? Yeah, I mean, it, 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 like every single device, it can be misused. Um, if you're going to do that every time, then your audience is going to sit there and go, mm, I know what's going here, you know. Um, oh, you're going to die in here. Like David Fincher movies, you know for a fact there's going to be a twist at the end. Like Seven, Zodiac, uh, Fight Club, you know for a fact you're just waiting for the last actor to come in, and you know there's going to be a twist that involves the main character getting fucked over. The game, you know, it's every single one of his films does the same thing. Mm. Um, the RIPD did that as well. It started off with them in the middle of his case, and it's then. It's a terrible film. <laughs> uh, I thought it was good, actually. <laughs> After all, the whole thing, Jack Bridges was from yeah, the same as thing. Well. You go past, you bring forward to present, all the way yeah. in the beginning, and some some new movies actually put the middle, you know, the point of no return, as uh, in well, yeah, I mean, and, and then they catch up, and then they actually, and here's like. Uh, 
the Empress New Groove is like that, like uh, start <laughs> him sobbing in the rain, yeah. and then oh everything, <laughs> and it's not today. The thing is, yeah, when you're doing that, you've got to make your mind up as A, are you doing it in order to have an interesting twist on the story, or are you doing it because you don't trust either your own dramatic skills to tell a proper story, or you don't trust the audience to get your emotional impact? I mean, I always, one of the, one of the <coughs> many criticisms of Titanic is that he couldn't tell a straight story. He had to frame it in an old woman telling a sob story about a lost love. He was so unfaithful of his own skills in drama and the audience's ability to do it, he had to show an audience crying while listening to the old woman's story. It was awful. I've seen the scenes when the guy feels like people uh, worship that movie. In the well, they do, but wrong. <laughs> 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 you know, a lot of people worship Avatar. It's yeah. terrible. My favourite yeah. scene from that movie is where the guy just falls off the ship. It's, it's funny. It. <laughs> it's just um, good. I'd have to say my personal reason. This is my personal reason. Yeah. But starting off um, like at the end or in the middle of something, then taking them back to the very beginning. It's only just to throw the audience in the deep end. Well, yeah, I mean. There's a thing called in media rare, which is yeah. in the middle of things. George Lucas used that for Star Wars. You just throw it straight in. Yeah. Um, but he uses extremely simple things. I mean, uh, I mean, immediately, I know one person, an old housemate, who <laughs> after the first oh scene where Darth Vader comes in, they actually didn't know who was the good guy and the bad guy. I was like, really? Yeah. The big dark faced guy and everything? I don't know. Light, right? yeah. See, one turn he said all films should have a beginning, middle and an end, but not necessarily in that order. Um, Kurosawa made a film called Rashomon, which really opened up Japanese cinema to the West. And that is set in 13th century Japan, and there's a crime being committed. It's been re this idea has been redone many, 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 many times, as soon as I tell you about it. And basically, it's the three suspects are brought before a judge and they each tell a story and we see that story. And then at the end of it, we're left to decide what we actually thought was the true story. That reminds me of Hero. It's yeah. been redone many yeah, times. It's, it's a we know Rashomon. Cliche now, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. I mean, the Simpsons mocked it where I say, you liked Rashomon, and he said, that's not how I remembered it. Because <laughs> it's all about what, who, whose version of that version you believe is true. Um, Kurosawa is very clever when directing it because you never see the judge. It's always the judge is the camera. And then it goes into a flashback of that person's story. It's really clever. Um, so yeah, that's your devices, your methods. So we were talking about such a short film here. Let's go to the actual structure of a script. Who's seen this sort of thing before? This is script structure. If it's not written like this, it isn't a screenplay. I will at this point brought out as well as the difference between a screenplay and a script. We'll throw them around and all that, but if you're talking official terms, you can really, you know, proper official. A screenplay is this. You will not see a lot, there shouldn't be any, right? But you won't see camera directions. You won't see mid shot, close in on man, sort of thing. Tense close. We might see it if it's a very important part of the plot. Like, for example, he's using a close up to avoid showing us what's behind him. Only if it's that sort of thing. But the screenplay is something that the director and the actors will read, and maybe it's the camera operator, the cinematographer. No, the actor would read the script, would they? No, screenplay. The screenplay? Yeah. The script is different. The script is something the director produces, uh, writes himself afterwards, which has got the, or the shooting script, as it's fully called, and that has all his little details about what's, which camera angles, and all that shit and all that. But if we look, this actually doesn't have a proper, oh there we go, look. There we go. This is the important part of writing a screenplay. If you use, not script, Scrivener if you've got a Mac, or I think there's a PC version of that now. What's the other one, Final Draft. Available on every good torrent site. What's remember. the free one, someone called uh, it? was Celtics. Um, Celtics. That's the yeah. one, yeah, yeah. Right, here we go, I'll tell you what the thing is. Two. That's the that's which scene number it is. There's one, two. Right, you can easily tell the scenes on that. Int, interior. The next line will the next thing will always be interior or exterior. It's int ext. Uh, there's sometimes differences like that if you're in an open yeah. car. Yeah, but I think you kept 
thing where you two are having a conversation here be scene one say interior classroom night and then you have your conversation now if you moved outside it would be scene two interior corridor same you'd write same there because it's immediately continued on so it's the same scene no it's the same time it's the same night yeah if so you put night they're in here that's 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 scene. night yeah that's scene one and then they just go outside and carry on and the conversation. And then if they go outside and carry on the same conversation, you because think we change rooms, because then we're going to have to move the camera setup and everything. If you think That's about a different it, one. Uh, That's think of scenes scene like two. locations, in a way. Uh, scene two, interior corridor, same, because it's the same time. So it's the same scene? No, no, no. It's, it's a different, different scene. scene. Right. It's a different time. But it's a time, it's a, different it's a change location. of time or change of location, that will differ, that will mean it's a different scene. Like they've changed location, but the time's the same. Oh, okay. Now, if we do, they can change the location and the time. We could cut to them in a car outside, and it could be 10 minutes later. What we do then is we put interior, sorry, exterior, outside university, later. That defines it's the same night, but it's just a little bit later. Um, all these things are useful, you know, they're, well, they're, they're, they're very important for the person reading it to get where they are and what they're doing. A lot of that is also for the actor and the cinematographer. Like if he looks at it and says, oh, night time, I'm gonna need lights. Daytime, interior, right, I'm gonna need lights inside. That's the sort of thing that's there for. The next thing is your body text that you'll write with. Now if you're using Final Draft, it will automatically function on, um, adjust to this. Notice the capital letters. When a character is first introduced in the script, it will be in capitals, curly, giddies. And look at the language of the script. It's very punctual, very short, very brief. It's not massively flowery. Everyone does the same problem when they do the same one. They finish it and it's like a novel. Yeah, keep it short. What does it say? Is keep it as simple as the pitch, is it? Yeah. I mean, all you're doing is describing a scene. You're not writing a novel. So if you keep it as short as a spoken Yeah. As you can. Get this notes it. A fan whips overhead. Get this glances up at it. That's pretty very basic language. You know? He looks cool and brisk in a white linen suit despite the heat. Doesn't really tell us a great deal, but we know enough. That's your screen that's your screenplay writing. As it goes on, dialogue. You have the name of the person speaking goes in the centre and then it's marginalised so that it's, you know, a tabulation in. So all right enough is enough. You can't eat the Venetian blinds curly, I just had them installed on Wednesday. Dialogue, and it goes back to that. So if you have a conversation. I just realised this is Chinatown. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. There's a conversation one. There's dialogue, it's really easy to spot because it's in the middle, like that. And there can be instructions in between, like Gittis leaves the bottle with curly. But your your elders brackets after the name will tell you what he's doing. You know, curl, drinking, relaxing a little. She's just no good, you know. That's, here we go, Curly, <coughs> pouring himself another glass. So, it's really basic instructions. It's almost as if you were taking notes while watching the movie. Um, that's screenwriting, that's screenplay writing. If you're gonna do an actual, if you're gonna direct it, you'll do, it. who was with me with when we were doing the skeleton one last week? That shot list we did was got all a shot list. That's totally different. That doesn't have any emotional impact. It is purely a technical work, piece of work. Um, that will entirely tell you, I mean here, there's no instructions at all about where the camera goes, nothing. Nothing at all. Now a lot of people who write scripts and want to direct them, 
and I used to be as bad as anyone with this when I first started it, will be say like, he throws an arm around curl, camera behind them. You, you also have your own, uh, in Southlex you have your own like camera, like um, place where you put your camera thing, you have actually different kind of... Um, That'll be for a, like a shooting script. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, that's if you're going to want to be a director, writer, sorry, could you cinematographer. Um, but if you're going to be an actor or a director or a writer, this is it. Now, two things. One, if you write your screenplay, if you want to go into this professionally, or even if you're going to go into competitions, if it's not in screenplay format, it won't even get looked at. If you hand it in in Microsoft Word, they'll just throw it in the bin. They won't even read the first page. If it's not in that format, it won't get looked at. No questions asked. Now, the other thing is, if we look at this, it doesn't have pages on it, unfortunately. Um, but there's a reason why it's in this particular format, is that if you print it out, there's also, it's, it's set with the font size and the font gap size and things like that, the, the line margin size. When you print this out, one page of script will work out by some pure magic to be almost exactly a minute on screen. Now there are variations on that. If you have a long dialogue scene, it might be shorter. If you have a scene that says, he's waiting outside the bank, it takes some time. That might be another 30 seconds. But generally, it works that way. So that means that when you've got your screenplay, your person who's the money man or whatever will look at the back page and go, oh, 97 pages long, that's an hour and a half, hour 40. You know, you might hand it back and say, cut 10 minutes off, or whatever. So that's screenplay format. Um, I did a little bit at the beginning about your sequences and your acts, and you know, sequences and shots and scenes. And then I've showed you how a screenplay looks and works, um, and a few devices. Any questions? Anything else you want to know? Uh, uh, the easiest way to actually say, um, if we're just seeing scenes, um, uh, sequences actually just to think about if you think about like a TV series or something like um, whenever they cut to a new piece or like a theatrical place where <coughs> you have to take a pause because you have to change the assets inside the room or something mm. that's a scene ending and a um, uh, little wait before this new series yeah ready um, or something and you have the end of snap just basically when the sequence ends isn't it yeah, I mean, and it, uh, act and sequence, sequence are almost entirely interchangeable. An act is a theatre thing. Yeah. A scene sequence is a film thing. It's basically I mean, he's, he's saying here as well that there's not always eight. I suggested eight sequence. Eight is a nice thing because what you do is you have your two, your two intro, your two... I'm trying to do it on here, actually. Uh, where did I put it? If we have eight sequence... I hope that didn't work. What we're doing? Uh, you need to switch back uh, to um, home. Home. Uh -huh. Now I can draw. Uh, have to you have to oh. select the. Oh. Did I click on the brush first? The pen. The pen. No, 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 no. no. That one. That one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Right. If we have eight sequences, that didn't work. Why? I don't know. I think you're doing like uh Aha, uh -huh. there you go. Do I have to hold it down? Yeah, I think so. That's very <laughs> readable, I'm not even gonna talk about it. Eight sequences, right? <laughs> Eight sequences is your general Hollywood movie. And then uh, your establishment of this you know, your establishment of the location, the safety, and everything else. After the first two sequences, almost everything is safe and secured and established. The end of the second sequence you're going to get what's called the reverse or the destabilization oh, sorry. where pretty much everything kicks off I'm fairly sure with um, The Dark Knight it was the end of the second sequence when we first were introduced to the, the Joker's little schemes um, and then um, so then you'll have two sequences of the bad guy winning everything or everything going wrong that brings us up to halfway your halfway point 
Um, Hollywood's big on the midpoint. I don't know why. They think that uh, they can keep people's interest past a certain point. You get to the midpoint, and then <coughs> you'll have the third pair of um, twos, where your character starts to re-establish things. They'll start to fight back. But at the end of Act 6, you'll think you're heading towards a victory. But then what they'll do is they'll do the second reverse, where something goes wrong. And Batman, Luke Skywalker, hasn't won. He has to do something else. And you've got two acts to resolve that in. And your final one, you might even, and generally sometimes a lot of people put uh, the end triumph sequence after, like an epilogue after the ace sequences. Um, so that's your eight sequence. Like I said, if you're doing short ones, if you're doing a, a 30 minute film, six sequences probably, maybe even four. Um, but each one is a self contained little film that answers a question and sets up your next one. So you move on to the, uh, you have one sequence, then you move on to the next one. Now I wonder, people might wonder why would you bother going into all that effort? It seriously reduces the stress of writing. It really does. You try and write without that sort of set of structures to yourself. It's kind of like learning to play, you know, thinking you're going to write a song and you don't know chords. You say, I don't need chords. Jimi Hendrix didn't need chords, but he did. So learn the structure first and then do your writing. Um, Anything else? Can you think of anything else, Keith? I have no idea what you've covered. S what a screenplay is, what, what a screenplay looks like, sequences. What uh, about effects, uh, voiceovers, and so on and so on? That's devices. I mean, if you want, a that's a device you might use. Like, if you want to use a voiceover, then that's a device. It's not structure. Um, does anyone know what I mean by a device? A device is literally a device you would use a screenplay as your screenplay writer. Your writer will use a device to, as a way of telling the story. Um, now, uh, Peter suggested voiceover. It's, like I said, as, as with all devices, it can be overused or it can be misused. If you have a character using voiceover, um, I'm trying to think of some obvious examples. Uh, Forrest Gump, beginning. Forrest Gump, American Beauty. I was going to say dad there, wrong one. American Beauty, yeah, he voice, he narrates all the way through. Um, now it can be well done, and it can be badly done, as with everything. Um, that's a device. Um, a framing device is like the one I said before where, in Titanic, where she's telling the story. The whole thing on the ship, not the Titanic, the explorer ship and the old woman, that's a framing device used to tell the story. Um, the dead, of, dead, dead on arrival, when the guy turns up and says, I've been murdered, you know, that's a framing device. Um, and then the story takes place within that. Uh, flashback is another device. Um, flash forward can be really weird, is another device. Um, I don't think I've heard of anyone that's actually successfully used flash forward. 12 Monkeys, Terry Gilliam. And that film is a general massive head screw. <laughs> and I thought I really recommend watching it, it's genius. Um, destroys most of the rules of sequence structure because it just just totally disappears every rule about timing and location. Any other devices? Um, what about the effects? Effects, again, there's some, they're part of your palette, they're part of your tool. I mean, if you want to use special effects, then they're part of what you put on the screen. Um, using effects is like saying, you know, using colour or black and white or uh, having a fire in your film or using guns or cars. Um, and what I will say for us at our level, I'm not putting us down, I'm just being practical, is <laughs> don't write whole films that have vast amounts of CGI in. Um, Please don't. No, because our, we, our experience tells us it just never gets finished. You don't have time. It, yeah, you don't have time. You don't have enough people. And you don't have enough people. Um, doing a bit would be interesting. I'd like to see us do something where it is work, where it's just a little bit. Like that one I said where someone's standing at a window and you replace the outside with a with space. 
you know, a little bit of that would be easy to do, I suppose. Some green screen would be yeah. okay, just to get um, some or an explosion. We've done blood spatters before with CG. But you can do blood spatters just with... Uh, you it was, that wasn't CG, that was just com compositing. Compositing. Yeah. See, I don't know much about that kind of shit. Well, you can call it so that's why I won't talk about it. It's I don't CG, know about that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we, sure. yeah. we had Robin Hammond and Alex here. They'd talk for three days about the <laughs> And they would show you four million YouTube clips about it. Um, I know diddly about that because my scripts are very dull and bland and down to earth and normal people, well not very normal people, in normal circumstances or normal people in extraordinary circumstances, I don't know. Um, so... Read script. Read script. Read, read script. Yeah, mm. online there's tons. There's a website called Drew's Script Drama. They also have like website for people who post their scripts. Yeah, to yeah. get read down and get to side fathers. I have a, like, I can post up web. Like, people post up their scripts, they're like, if you want to make this, just get in touch. So if you want to find a script, you would have to kind of do Yeah, mm -hmm. this website has got hundreds, maybe even a couple of thousand screenplays on it. Oh, shitty pop-ups, because it's Explorer. Why can't mm. you use Firefox? I don't know if this is, has it. It, it does, just click Windows. Okay. Um, I didn't ask you to do that. Oh, there we go. Film scripts. Bloody hundreds of them. even got TV scripts. Oh, TV oh, cool. There you go. Billions of them. That's what I'd like to do. <laughs> that was on the side, it was awesome. Uh, do you want to talk about uh, getting sell your script or something like that? Uh, I don't know how to sell scripts, none of us do, because if we did, we wouldn't be sat here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, ends of competitions. You know, be very careful about entering competitions, though. Always read all the small print, because I've never entered the Channel 4 film competition, because there's a little bit at the bottom that says, once you enter it, we own it. Yeah, so I would never have touched the Channel 4 film competition. It's the same thing about other, like, film... When you want to post your film and they say, oh, it's already on YouTube, you can't use that. Yeah, that's oh another yeah. thing, yeah. yeah. We've encountered that before. You can't enter some film competitions or film festivals if you've already put it online somewhere. Oh, right. How annoying is that? Yeah. Or actually yeah. it. Because they want all of the promotion. Yeah, yeah copywriting is a big yeah. problem. Um, so you get paid for the script to start, but it's successful. If you win, though, you get the little fee <laughs> and they got everything else. Writing is the great underprivileged so I was gonna aspect. Say, I, want, I particularly want to like, write for television. Um, I want to enter some of my scripts into festivals, but I want to make sure I can write more than one episode. I would say TV is actually more successful than film right now. Yeah, because you Way can always, you always... TV is probably in a golden age right now, thanks to yeah. HBO and the rest. I always said um, so as well, actually. TV yeah, is... Television, comments and movies. Mm. You know, you, have, you really have to grab my attention with the film. Yeah. You have to say that. TV also gives you much more opportunity to uh, tell a long story and uh, really build. I mean, I'm I besotted with Boardwalk Empire. That is exactly because it goes why on I forever. Yeah. Television, you've got more room to develop characters, storylines. You can go somewhere with the TV. Mm. A simple film, you just see the characters for an hour and a half, and there's not really any point. To it. And that's why I prefer American TV in particular because there's more episodes. You get to yeah, I mean you know, the everything from um, you know Game of Thrones, Breaking Bad. They are the most talked about things in the world right now. Yeah. Easy. Um, the Office. Yeah. Um, Mostly British, uh, British TV shows are really getting up there, but they're not that popular in like on TV, only like online and stuff. Yeah. Like DVD sales. And what's we make? Um, TV stuff. I'd say do it like webisodes, like, put, like do yeah, a Yeah, do series. like Freddie Wong did, and he actually got these videos out and now making DVDs and real time t TV shows just because he made that video game high school online and he got like feedback from people watching it and then he used that, got like in touch with the audience a bit more and that boosted his rating so high that he's you now he's making his own stuff on TV and stuff like that. God. It's like the YouTube that got out of YouTube. 
Uh, YouTube as well. I'm not saying just say YouTube, but the internet. I mean, I prefer. YouTube prefer is so much to get big on what you, we yeah. want to do because everyone in the world wants it. It's like being a fish in a huge fish pond. Everyone's trying to grab that piece of food. You know, everyone says, "Oh, did you, I mean, what was it?" Some friends we know went to Digital City, oh, yeah. and they said, "What's your audience?" And they said, "YouTube," and they went, "And you can't just say YouTube." YouTube's like saying, well, I'm going to go to see you. What you can do is always gonna turn up. me. It's not, you have to get them to come to you. You know what I mean? How are you going to promote yourself? How are you going to be unique? How are you going to spread yourself? But your well, what he did is actually, he didn't like start a big thing. He did a big, like, short film stuff on YouTube, but then he made that big Kickstarter thing that went viral and everybody knew about Video Game High School. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think everybody has seen Video Game High School. I find it I find it terrible. Yeah, like the first season is terrible. Like I've heard like the new new one is actually making DVD titles and stuff like that. The one uh, where it's actually getting a proper crew and T V airing and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's actually getting um really uh, really a step up. One thing I will go on I'll I'll slightly change that now and go on about how you start thinking of your script. Uh, a friend was talking about this with me online this afternoon. She said, well, how